What is going on? We are returning to the Isle of Burke. We have we had a lot of great comments mm -hmm. in our last video reacting to the Isle of Burke uh, trailer that we did, the, the Epic Universe trailer for Isle of Burke. A lot of great comments, a lot of um, critiques about how we sort of, you know, um, brought forth our opinions or we how we analyzed it. So we're going to kind of go through those comments and kind of and kind of discuss them and, and, and react to them. So this is an all you know, co a viewer comment reaction video. Uh, we're gonna go through them. The Italiano and I up next on OG55. Welcome aboard, my fellow Vikings. <laughs> we are going to talk all about the Isle of Burke today. But before we dive into our festivities, I want to introduce my my sexy collaborator, the Italiano. Your hair is looking good today, George. Thank really you. Good, actually. Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate good. it. Yeah, I got that. Uh, I got that Josh Demaro product going on. It's like you know what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> hey, uh, if you let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. Okay, so before we get before we start this, we're going to go through a bunch of comments. We're going to react. We, we're probably going to disagree on almost everything, right? <laughs> but this is the thing. This is all in good fun. Okay, we're, we're it's constructive. And um, any of the people that made these comments, if they want to join us in a future show, mm -hmm. reach out to either George or I, we can have you on and we can talk about it on the video as well. So that's what George and I love to do. We love to talk shop, mm -hmm. we love to nerd out and, and talk theme parks, whether you agree or disagree with us, we welcome all of it. So I want to make that very, very clear. All right, here well we Yep, here we go. Okay, so this is from Banjo Tales. Now, first of all, Banjo has been a viewer of the channel for a very long time. I remember seeing Banjo's comments for for years. So Banjo, do appreciate you all these years um, watching the content and everything. I know we don't always agree, and we'll see that in this in this comment right now, but we do appreciate you, yes, you checking us out and everything. And Banjo, you know? based off of your, uh, your YouTube name, I'm assuming you are a huge fan of... Uh, banjo kazooie i have to say i grew up with that game on nintendo 64 so if you're a huge fan awesome because i yep. am too <laughs> there you go a common ground common ground <laughs> okay so here we go we're gonna start off the talking points in this video have so many contradictions one minute you like a concept art image showing the overall look of the land then you bash the shit out of everything an off on offer shown in the video and other concept art, which is it you guys. Okay. So here's the thing, Banjo. I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm kind of confused as to what you're saying here because we didn't really ever say we love the overall look of the land early on in the video. We actually said the overall look of the land didn't really impress us. Now there's other concept art along the way, the tighter shots of certain things that George and I did like. I mentioned in the video, I do like the water element in this land. I think the water element with the giant statues coming out of the water is really, really awesome. You know, I even like some of the, like the, the, the paint, the, um, the flat wooden kind of stylized dragons mm -hmm. that you yeah. see in, in like the boat ride, right. That you, the, the targets you shoot at. I, I thought the stylized look of, of those wooden planks or whatever you want to call them. I think those looked really cool. But we didn't we didn't say the overall look of the land was was terrible and then we loved it. We didn't do that. Now we overall did not we were not impressed with the way the over the land looked overall as a as a cohesive unit, but there's individual elements within the land within the land that we were actually impressed by. And we didn't bash everything either. So I'm not really sure why you're saying that because we were very look, we were gawking, we we're fawning over the over the restaurant, the meal hall. Mm -hmm. I mean nothing but high praise for that you know the stage uh, show the stage the st show I, i'm i'm really looking forward to that the um the boat water shooting target <laughs> ride i forget the actual name that that universal was calling it but that looks a lot of fun and i even said that um you know in the florida heat you know that's going to be you know very um 
like a welcome thing. a welcome you know yeah to to visitors and guests because it it gets very hot you know and and they said that you will get soaked on it so i think people would really welcome it and as og pointed out the the water element um i even mentioned too with the um the the, the roller coaster that i i wasn't too big on the overall aesthetics of the roller coaster but the part that they showed where they it kind of goes in this under trestle um tunnel where it shows like a bridge and then it comes up and it has a water element that shoots out i thought that was really cool yeah and it, like stuff like that so yeah it's there there were certain aspects of the land that we kind of just dissected to what we thought was was very good on universal's part but just as the overall scope of it was not very cohesive for, mm -hmm. for us yeah, and, and what and what and and actually Banjo gets into this and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but it's not that we think it's a bad land. It's more of expectation versus reality kind of situation here with I think with George and I. So I think people need to understand that. We're not we're not saying this is a bad land. I mean it's not bad, but we'll get into that because yeah, Banjo actually kind of brings an element of that up later on. So he goes on to continue. I'm in Australia. That's awesome. That's awesome. All the way from Australia, man. That's cool. Um, I, I'm in Australia and I was blown away by what was being presented for the whole land. And this is partly because the theme parks near me are very similar in style to Knots and Six Flags. And our rides have six foot high pool fences around them as a safety barrier, lacking theming generally in most cases. See, this is why I respectfully got to disagree though. Mm -hmm. yeah in that Knott's has pretty decent theming. If you go to Camp Snoopy at Knott's, that's a pretty decently themed land. Now for Knott's being a regional park, I think it's fantastic. And I think for a regional park, I think Knott's excels. I think, I think they exceed expectations. Um, but I expect more from Universal. Do you understand? I mean, when you're, when you're already comparing this new, when you're already, when you're, when you're already saying, well, you know, th this land at Epic Universe, is so good because it doesn't have a six foot high pool fence <sighs> that that's a low bar bro you know what i'm saying like we should have a little bit higher expectations for this park that is supposed to be universal's best and that's where a lot of this is coming from for me personally in that we're told and you you, you you're kind enough to quote woodbury here uh, the executive at universal saying it's it's the most technically advanced park we've ever done okay does this land now look Forget the whole park, okay? Because obviously we don't know the whole park yet. But this is a part of that park. Is this land? If When you think the most innovative, the most technically advanced park, is this the kind of land you're thinking of? About a lot of these flat rides, these spinner rides, and this kind of stuff, these kind of offerings, Banjo? Honestly, is this the kind of land you envision when you think of the most technically advanced I'm sorry, I don't. I, I expect a lot more than that. I've seen Universal do better. So to tell me that the that the spinner in the air and this little coaster and the water ride that you shoot at targets, you're gonna tell me that fits in line with what Woodbury's saying about being the most technically advanced? I'm sorry, <laughs> you know it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Go ahead, George. Whatever. And, you know. and I think honestly, we touched upon this in the video when we were critiquing it that um, out of a lot of the DreamWorks animated movies, aside from Prince, uh, the Prince of Egypt, because I do agree with OG, I think that is the most breathtaking visual animation I think that DreamWorks has done even to date back in, what was it, 1997, 1998. Um, but How to Train Your Dragon, I think, was very decent with the animation, with the storyline. It, it was a heavy contender. And honestly, I have to say it, I enjoyed them more than the, the the shrek franchise if i'm being very honest and oh, definitely over the, the the minion franchise yeah oh um, yeah but um so what i would have liked to see and i'm not saying this in comparison to disney i'm giving this as an example of how they could have showcased how to train your dragon the whole more so their camp where they actually train the dragons, how they train, you know, to be a, a dragon rider or what have you. I feel like that should have j just been a piece of the land. The rest of it, I would have done it like a Pandora-esque style where you see these giant gorgeous mountains with the waterfalls and the caverns. Kind of do something like that. And then you can incorporate a dark ride where it's like you feel like that you're actually riding a dragon and you're not riding a 
fake built dragon roller coaster that Toothless forgot to put the wings on. And it's like, to me, that cheapens what the actual film franchise is all about. They could have done something so mythological, so perplexed, you know, profound. Breath, yeah, breathtaking. Breathtaking. And- and, yes, and, exactly. and like I said in the like I said in the in the, reac- in the in the reaction video from the other day, everyone just wants to ride on a dragon. So when the, when you dance around the obvious, oh, we're going to create a contraption that feels like you're on a dragon, but without the wings. It's 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 a little bit lost in translation for me. I'm sorry, it is. Just put people on a freaking dragon. That's what we all want to do. You know what I'm saying? Disney does this too. I, I they completely do this all the time too. But but. We're going to have to judge Universal. Look, they're at a high standard now. They, Universal has set the bar high for themselves because they've done such great work. So he goes on to continue, Banjo does. Um, we do, however, have uh, Gerst Solar Sky Fly Flat Ride at our park themed to airplanes. And to be honest, it's a crap ride with low capacity. Load and unload times can be shocking. At first, I did think it was a strange choice to have these two rides for such a massive crowd drawing a massive crowd drawing theme park, but it's, but it's a strange choice to have it. It's the right choice to have it because it, because if it's the purpose of function flying dragon style and theme, it's paint style overall look to the area fits and creates the flying aspect from the movie around the grand stands. So based on that, I have to give it a, 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 a pass for being acceptable yeah, I, I think this franchise can do better, respectfully, Banjo. I, I think you can have a, a dark ride where you're flying on a dragon, have massive sets. You can do, like I said in the other video, you can do a almost like a forbidden journey type of dark ride or something along those lines, you know. Um, I, you know, look, it, so, I mean, I, when, I, when, I'm thinking, when I'm thinking, as Woodbury says, the, techno, the, the most techno, technologically advanced park we've ever done, I'm not thinking about flat rides and spinners. And I understand not everything has to be a massive e-ticket. I understand that. But what in this land fits the criteria that Woodbury is talking about? What fits this as the most technically advanced anything in this land? It's a bunch of spinner rides. Get, I know you might give it a pass because of the style and the art and all that, but it's like, go ahead, George. Yeah, I. T- to me, when when you have that kind of spinner ride where I, I, I get it, it's supposed to give you the, the sensation and the feel of how you would really feel like when you're when you're riding a dragon, so to speak, and you do the barrel roll and, and what have you, and you have the control of that. But at the same time, it's not visually eye appealing to the fact that, OK, well, you can't really f- say that you're really flying on a dragon because everyone's on this big giant wheel and you're just spinning around to me that just it, it's basically you're decorating with an ip <clears throat> to a simple basic carnival ride i'm sorry that's that's what it is and that would be fine if it wasn't for the comments like that woodbury yes. says down below quote it's the most technologically advanced park we've ever done un- end quote woodbury said so when you set that bar banjo the spinner rides are not it Okay, I'm sure when 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 they announced Epic Universe, and this is going to be this is going to be this amazing park. I'm sure this was not the type of thing that you thought that they were going to put in this park. I think people expected more. Now, I want to make it very clear: this is just a piece of this park. But let's also be fair. We've seen the tr- the, the trailer for Celestial Park, which again has a massive roller coaster over a lot of grass. The queue might be pretty cool, but the th- coaster itself. You know, not not a whole lot of theming there. You know, a lot of it looks pretty. But again, I don't see much of like the wow factor in terms of like what Woodbury's talking about. You know, I really don't. I've been to Super Nintendo World here in Hollywood. We don't have Donkey Kong and we don't have Yoshi, but we have everything else. We got Mario Kart, the land, we got Toadstool Cafe, cute land. I really enjoy Mario Kart, but none of, I, none of it, none of the offerings in Super Nintendo World left me like oh my god this is a technical marvel i gotta tell my friends what i just experienced and especially since we've already seen it now in japan now hollywood and now we're going to get it in orlando this is the third time around with super nintendo where pretty much i'm going to say give or take about 70 to 75 percent is already completed that we have already seen as you said og minus yoshi and donkey kong but again yoshi again cute 
you know, ride for the kids, but basically it's a Nintendo version of the people mover is basically really what it is. I mean, nothing right. that's too over the top. I will say though, I am looking forward to donkey Kong. That's going to be the, the crowd draw drawer there, but it's like <clears throat> so far that would be one attraction thus far after. So we would be going, if N super Nintendo is the next land that they decide to go through, um, out of the three lands that they presented, we would only have Donkey Kong and then a, a live immersive stage show. Because that's even, the whole game changer for the whole entire park. Well, and that well, and that's the thing. Well, so far, you know, game so, far, so far, so far. Yeah. But here's the thing too: is like I liked Mario Kart. Actually, I did a I did a review and and Banjo. I was very critical of Mario Kart leading leading up to that attraction, and when I actually wrote it, I really did enjoy the ride quite a bit. But again, it's not technologically advanced like it's not impressive technology in fact i would say the opposite in a lot of ways i think the ar element of mario kart actually takes away from that attraction a mm -hmm. little bit because it's kind of sloppy a lot of the ar is like going through walls and it's not it's not it's not lined up properly that's where it ruins it for me that's yeah. really where it ruins it for me because i feel like that there's too much going on at once that it's like massive overload of what i'm trying to look at i'm trying to actually visualize the real life set pieces to right. the ar the ar is all over the place you know it doesn't the cart it feels like it should be going fast when it really isn't it's just like i will say the the effect of feeling like you're on the rainbow bridge that's really cool the yes. effect of feeling that that was completely awesome the actual set pieces themselves from mario kart were phenomenal but putting that all together I feel like that they had so many ideas that they didn't know which way to go. So they're like, let's just throw them all in there and see what we get. Well, and the irony of it all is, is Woodbury Woodbury is, 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 is bragging about the most advanced technology and it's the technology in Mario Kart. That's probably the biggest problem with that ride. Like the old school, traditional dark ride sets are the best part about Mario Kart. Yeah. Like literally the best part. And the technology yeah. takes away from it. I've actually known people who have taken the headsets off because it's an it's a no, it's more of an <laughs> George has yeah it's more of an annoyance th than anything that benefits the attraction. So again, we're not trashing the park banjo, but so far what we've seen from what we've experienced with Super Nintendo World, from what we're seeing with Isle of Burke, from what we're seeing with Celestial Park, where. I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing the most advanced anywhere here, really. I'm seeing a lot of good stuff, absolutely good stuff, fun stuff that I want to experience 100%. But does it quite meet the criteria that Woodbury is even saying, where it's the most technologically advanced park we've ever done? Has it convinced you yet? I haven't seen anything that's convinced me yet. Now, that doesn't mean that the next lands that they come out with, like Dark Universe, this, that, and the other isn't going to be that. And it, it, that doesn't mean I have an open mind. Dark universe might blow us away. It probably will. Harry Potter. There's probably gonna be a ton of stuff in that. That's going to be amazing, but we haven't seen that stuff yet. And so far based on what we have seen, I'm a little underwhelmed based on what we were promised. That's all we're saying. We're not trashing mm -hmm. it. It's just underwhelming based on what we were promised. So uh, Banjo goes on to continue. Let's get the full quote you keep returning to. Quote, it's the most technologically advanced park we've ever done. End quote, Woodbury said. Quote, and that speaks to both the attractions themselves, the next generation robotics drone technology, all the way through to the guest experience. The full guest journey is really being taken to a whole new level. End quote, Woodbury added. So here's the thing. He says here, and that speaks to both the attractions themselves. What attractions, Banjo, in Isle of Burke meet the criteria of the most technologically advanced? Is there anything in it? I mean, the, the stage show is absolutely breathtaking. Is it the most advanced stage show you've ever seen, though? I mean, can you really go that far with that? I don't I mean, th There's a lot of flat rides, a lot of kind of standard theme park stuff in this land. Well, Celestial Park. What, what, what's what's so technologically advanced about celestial parks so far that we what we've seen i don't know i i you know for me i i'm not seeing it but i'm open to being wrong if i'm proven wrong i'm fine with that i have no problem mm -hmm. being wrong but i for me personally i just haven't been wowed by it and that's just my personal opinion and everyone it's all subjective that's the thing but he goes on here to say, quote, we have the benefit of new technology that we're deploying in terms of managing ticketing, revenue, and revenue management across each of those platforms, which 
with that, there's a lot of new technology with facial recognition and this, that, and the other, which I've heard of the ticketing. Okay. I can give them that. Absolutely. I'll, I'll give them a, a, um, you know, a, a, a check mark in that box. But in terms of the offerings in the park, I, I'm just not convinced, Banjo. I'm sorry, man. I'm just not. And, I, you know, that's just my opinion. But if you are, that's awesome, dude. You know, we're not trying to convince anyone not to like it. We like it. We just don't think it's met the threshold that Universal has set for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the final uh, line here says, it's a broad statement for the whole park. Not every single ride, attraction, or garden bed is going to be a million-dollar build. Understand that. But when are they going to start impressing us, Banjo? I've seen Celestial Park from the last trailer. It's a roller coaster over some grass with a nice theme, with a nice queue. Um, I've experienced most of Super Nintendo World. Again, cute land, probably on par with a Toontown, though. It doesn't scream most the most technologically advanced anything. It, it's in fact the technology a lot of way in a lot of ways takes away from the land, ironically. And this Isle of Burke. Again, a nice, cute land for kids, but what is what is it offering that a lot of other parks haven't offered a dozen times already? That's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. So, George, before we move on to the next comment, anything you want to add to this? Um, everything you said is is spot on of what we're trying to, you know, explain like how we feel about it and everything. But Banjo, definitely, uh, thank you for. Um, your questions, comments, Absolutely. concerns, opinions. As I said, we welcome all of it. As long as everyone is is kind and civil, you know, we welcome all opinions. We'll discuss it. We'll debate it. We we love the interaction. So don't ever let that discourage you. Um, you know, keep them keep them coming. Yeah, no, and Banjo, absolutely. And offer stands. If you ever want to come on the channel and, and talk to us about any of this stuff, we would love to have you, man. We would love to have you. My The contact information is actually, um, when you go to my YouTube page, uh, like for business inquiries and what have you, you can, you can check out the email. So if you want to join us, we would love to have you. Or you can just comment on this video. Say, hey, you know, I want I want to get on board. I want to I want to I want to talk shop with you guys on camera. We will love we would love to have you, man. And and we appreciate that we appreciate the the input and everything. And um, we respect your opinion. It's just unfortunately unfortunately, man, we just kind of see it a little differently, you know. So, but again, thanks for the comment. And we appreciate you know um, your support all these years because I've seen your comments for a while now, and and we do appreciate you watching the content one hundred percent. Absolutely. And friend of the channel, Cliffix, Cliffix on YouTube. Everyone subscribe to Cliffix on YouTube. Incredible content. We love Cliffix. We are huge fans of this man. So make sure you show a lot of love for Cliffix. He says here, OG and George, how would you compare this land to Avengers Campus, Toontown, Tomorrowland, Pixar Pier, Toy Story Land, or Frontierland? Where would this Isle of Burke rank under over those Disneylands? Mm. Here's my issue, Cliffix, with this question. The fact that we're even putting this land in the same camp as an Avengers campus or a Pixar pier or a Tomorrowland, even the, the state of Tomorrowland right now in both on both coasts says a lot. It says a lot because you got to think here, Cliffix, this is supposed to be Universal's best. OK, we just we just thought we did, went through a comment here where Woodbury at Universal said that it's the most technologically advanced park they've ever done. And we're having a conversation about over under Avengers Campus. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> that's I mean, that's that's where we're at. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why George and I, we expect more. Mm -hmm. Pixar Pier was never meant to be the most advanced anything. Okay? Yeah. So it's a different it's a different expectation. And, and I mentioned this to OG before because we were talking about that even before we even you know, you, you came up with the question, which by the way, Cliff, uh, great question. And thank you for, um, your support and, and contribution to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, speaking to Pixar pier, it's what, and again, I will say this is where Disney dropped the ball on that one is because you already had a built in pier when they opened DCA back in 2001, basically all they did was just did, made a de design of adding Pixar decorations over an already built pier, which again, not my favorite, you know, thing. I I'm actually starting to get to the point where I'm with OG. I, I feel like honestly, keep the lagoon, keep world of color, but like maybe do something different, like with the pier overall. Cause aesthetically it's and eh, not the best pleasing, but anyway, I digress. So anyway, you already have a pier that's already built and they just throw Pixar themed, IP to it. 
But then when you take the Isle of Burke, that they're literally starting from the ground up. Blank canvas. But then you're going to then compare it to Pixar Pier of something that was already built but just was thrown IP decorations at. That's where the, the strong critique that we're aiming at Universal because, again, it just comes back to it, it was supposed to be the poster child that this is going to be the, the the technological, ambitious theme park that was supposed to bring Disney to its knees. And right now we're not seeing that. So, yeah. So when you compare Isle of Burke to Pixar Pier, I do see the same qualities. But, again, I kind of expected Universal to do a little bit more than Pixar Pier because, again, Disney just kind of half-assed it and threw decorations over the pier that was already built. This is something that was built from the ground up, and this is what the final product is. Yeah, and, like, in regard to, like, Toy Story Land. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Toy Story Land. You know, I think it looks like Bugs Land with a roller coaster. I'll be honest, you know. Mm -hmm. I had fun, though, on Slinky Dog. I think it's a fun coaster. But it's, it's not the most incredible experience by any means. But the issue here is it wasn't promising to be that, though. You didn't have Josh Diamaro coming out saying, or or JPEG or whoever to come out and say, "Hey, we're, we're building this 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 the, the most advanced land we've ever done." Here's Toy Story Land. You know what I'm saying? So I think the expectations here, Cliffix, is kind of where George and I are at. It's not that Isle of Burke is a bad land, like we told um, Banjo. It's not a bad land. I think kiddos will probably love it. You know what I'm saying? It's cute. It's just when you're when you're telling me this is the best of the best that Universal is going to do, the most advanced. And you're giving me this, you're giving me flat rides and spinners. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, it falls short, man. It falls short, you know, unfortunately, if you know, so we'll see, but Clifix, thank you, brother. We yeah. appreciate you. So, so to, to, to answer your overall question, believe it or not, I throw the Iowa Burke in any one of those lands. Cause I don't see it above it for sure. So it does fall into that category because it doesn't really exceed the expectations, but yeah, the only difference is this, this land is supposed to be part of something much bigger that universal was promising. Well, and I would even say, look, if you want to talk Toontown, I would put Toontown over, over Isle of Burke because Toontown has an e-ticket. Mm, Toontown has true. an immersive e-ticket dark ride with Mickey and Minnie runway railway. Yeah. And then also too, I, I get it. We're, we're waiting in the wings for this. We don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I, I'm for sure with the Avengers Campus, you know, we're we're due for that e-ticket, you know, and especially with uh, Disneyland Forward coming up and, you know, it's it's going to happen. So depending on how technological that is, you know, Avengers Campus may come out a little bit more on top there as well. Well, yeah. OK, so Avengers Campus, but even Toontown, again, you have one right railway. You also have Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. I haven't seen anything attraction wise, right? in Isle of Burke that comes close to cartoon spin. They don't even have a dark ride in Isle of no, Burke. They don't. And that's the problem. And that's what we were saying in the video. This is a great franchise. There's no dark ride. Uh, you know, in Tomorrowland, I, you know, as much as Tomorrowland, I'll, I'll speak just to the one in Anaheim. I get it aesthetically, cohesively. It's a mess, Cliff. It's, it's an absolute mess. But I mean, do you think there's anything in Isle of Burke that's better than Star Tours or Space Mountain? Or even the submarine voyage? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm it's I'm telling you, and that's the issue here. You know, this is a great franchise, How to Train Your Dragon, and it's like we got a bunch of flat rides, and I and it doesn't look. I'm not a Universal hater. If you love Universal, and that's your bias, if you if that's your passion, you should be even more upset because they could have done better. They absolutely could have done better. And it's okay to acknowledge that. And I understand there's 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 people that are very frustrated with Disney and rightfully so. But just because we're frustrated with Disney, we want to send Disney a message that hey, there's competition, you should be on your P's and Q's, which they should be, doesn't mean that we just smile and accept anything that Universal gives us. You still have to be we still have to as a community be critical of Universal even though we want Universal to make Disney nervous. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If Disney if Disney promised the most technologically advanced park and 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 trotted out some land like this with a bunch of flat rides, I, I think the community would be pretty disappointed to mm -hmm. be honest with you. I think they and, would be. And I think really the one thing that does kind of save Pixar Pier in that notion is honestly Toy Story Mania. I feel like yeah. that 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 ride kind of 
somewhat saves that land because again, you have an interactive ride that's built for all ages. It's a, it's an indoor, somewhat of a dark ride, you know, but it's a lot of interactive, but it's, it's something that's not really, you know, thrown up with decoration. Right. A hundred percent. And again, Cliffix, thank you so much, brother. We, we, we love you. And, um, and offers out there too. Like we just said with Banjo, if you want to come on and like talk about it on a video, we can like debate it and, and, and talk shop. We'd love to have you Cliffix, you know, your, your family here at OG 55. And, uh, we would love to have you on it and talk universal. We'll talk Disney, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, but uh, we'd love to have you if you're up to it, if you're up to it. Um, Michael's four, nine, one, seven says here, I get why they said it takes place between two and three as a timetable, given how three ends. Do I think an actual timeline is needed? No, but I get the thought process. And unlike Galaxy's Edge, this time period won't lock you out of meet and greets with certain characters. Okay, this is a fair point. And this is actually something that like, yes, while, while, the, while, while we've been critical of Galaxy's Edge with the timeline, locking in that timeline, we even mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the video, the, this last video with Isla Burke, where the, How to Train Your Dragon is a smaller franchise in Star Wars. So when you do the timeline thing, it, it, it doesn't limit you as much. Mm -hmm. So I think Michael makes a great point here. And I think we kind of even hinted a little bit about it in the last video. Um, it's not as egregious and not as bad as Galaxy's Edge. Because Galaxy's Edge, it locks you out all kinds of stuff. Here, yeah. it doesn't. So that's a fair point, Michael, and 100% agree with you on this. What do you think, George? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And yes, we did touch upon this in the last video where, yeah, when you take a franchise like How to Train Your Dragon and the the open, wide universe of what Star Wars is, yeah, that's, you you know, you, you're, you're kind of left that if you do want to do a little bit of a timeline, um, you have more flexibility with how to train your dragon. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is definitely a fair point. Um, yeah. To my, to Michael's point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then he goes on to continue. I do agree that there should be at least one indoor dark ride though. Looking mm -hmm. forward to that stage show though. Yeah. And that's my biggest gripe. I think, look, if they would have some of these, um, flat ride spinners and stuff like that, and they had an, an elaborate dark ride in that mix somewhere, that's a really balanced land. That's good. That's really good. And again, like to Banjo's comment, I'm not saying that there's not a place for like filler rides or like not like he, Banjo's right. Not everything has to be a million dollar build. I get that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, you want to have at least one kind of like big heavy mm -hmm. hitter too. You know what I'm saying? And I want to. And I want to bring something up uh, really quick, too, that I've noticed that a lot of people are saying online and on their own YouTube videos that they're saying how to train your dragon. This land, the Isle of Berg, has four attractions, which they are including the fourth attraction as the stage show. So if moving forward in the theme park industry, when they start incorporating that the live shows are now part of the attractions of a land should that now not also go for disney as well because a lot of times when people talk disney lingo they say okay this land has two attractions and a show but for the isle of burke they're incorporating the show as an attraction so i find it quite interesting that for me i think i take it as the, this land has three attractions and one show now this show I feel like it ranks the three attractions. So in that sense, I feel like that's where Universal felt like, okay, we're doing this headliner of a show that is now titled as an attraction. So we can kind of do these offhand rides, but it'll make up for it with the show. And that's where I feel like, as we all agree, that an indoor dark ride would have offset that. So you could have had maybe two small cd uh attractions you have a show and then you have and and i don't know, maybe like an e-ticket dark ride i guess you could still call it an e-ticket but i feel like because they are putting the show into the category of an attraction it feels like an excuse on universal's part to say oh well we could do these kind of cheap ass rides because we got a, a big headliner show that we are quoting as an attraction yeah 
And the show looks amazing. It really does. It does. It does, but I think I think there should have been an amazing attraction in there somewhere though, yeah. like an actual ride, you know. And I think that would have flushed it out a little better. I think there's a little too many off the shelf rides in this mm-hmm. in this land, in my opinion. And again, it's all subjective, you know what I'm saying? Some people might be completely fine with it, and that's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just I, I see it differently. I just think there should have been at least maybe one thing in there that was a little bit more, and you know, and not. That's the other thing too, which we talked about with Jack from DSNY in the video where there's a lot of outdoor stuff in Epic Universe where it's like in Florida, you can see how that could become a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but uh, Cliffix is our last view, uh, last comment of the day. Cliffix again with, a, with another comment saying, I suspect that Universal is starting off revealing the least spectacular land first. Each land will reveal, each land they reveal will be larger and more wow. The idea is to outdo each announcement with the next. It's reasonable to expect that all the la- that all of the lands reveal PR line will end with either Nintendo or Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter will be the last. Oh my God! Wow! Reveal to wrap up the entire park. The fact that How to Your Train Your Dragon is the first one means that the next one will build up and just be better and better and the next even better etc the idea that this is the one the the idea that this one is the least impressive is very impressive for the whole park but this is the issue cliffix is not the first one they universal did a did a trailer about a month ago on celestial park and it was an outdoor roller coaster and some beautiful scenery and some beautiful stuff i'm not going to downplay that i mean a lot of it aesthetically looks beautiful but this isn't the first one this is the second trailer and also keep in mind, Cliffix, most people have a lot of people have experienced most of what Nintendo World is going to be. I have. I've been to Nintendo World here in Hollywood. I've done Toastool Cafe, Mario Kart, The Land. Now, granted, we haven't done Donkey Kong yet. So to be fair, you know, we'll have to wait that out. But Japan has the Yoshi thing. Japan has everything pretty much that that um, Epic Universe will have. I mean, and they're even going to get Donkey Kong. So. We've seen Celestial Park, the trailer. We've seen How to Train Your Dragon. People have already experienced a good chunk of Nintendo World. So, Cliff, it's, when are they going to start wowing us? When? I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, I haven't seen anything, again, and I'm not saying it's a bad park, because people get really funny with Universal. I'm not saying it's a bad park. It's a, it looks like it's a really good, fun park. But when are they going to start wowing us? Because I haven't seen it yet. Now, Dark Universe might be that thing. Harry Potter might be that thing. Donkey Kong might be that thing. I'm just saying based on what we've seen so far on Celestial Park, Dragon, and what I've experienced at Nintendo World, nothing has really blown me away yet personally. What do you think, George? Um, Yeah, so far I'm not really seeing anything that's kind of wowing me at the moment. I do agree. As I said, we kind of already seen like 70 to 75% of Super Nintendo World already. Um, As I said, Yoshi will be a cute family ride again but it's going to be a universal nintendo version of the people mover so to speak right. um donkey and kong I, I think is going to be great right and, and, and just to be clear the yoshi thing i think is very needed in terms of like you know i think those kind of rides have a place right yeah but again it's not going to be this technological marvel that woodbury is sort of alluding to I, you I, know? Will, I will put it i will put it to you all this way if universal would have just said We're coming out with a brand new park, a third gate or a fourth gate, if you want to include Volcano Bay, to the Universal Orlando Resort. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be awesome. That's fine. But if but the terms that this is going to be the most technological thing ever to grace the the theme park industry. And there's people online saying, oh, you know, what Disney's going to have to beckon the call. You know, how is Disney going to respond? This is why Disney hasn't responded. Because if they're looking at it through an industry point of view, as a corporate point of view, and they're seeing lands like Celestial Park and How to Train Your Dragon, Disney's saying, why do we need to put money out to go against this? This isn't something that's worth our time. So yeah. they're going to wait. Now, to be fair... Um, I do agree with you, Cliffix. I do 
feel like um, Harry Potter will be, you know, obviously it's, it, it, it was a game changer for Universal. You know, it brought Universal back on the map. So of course they're going to keep using that franchise. But at the same time, as much as it's going to be immersive and spectacular, I feel like a lot of people are kind of getting burnt out on Potter. And I think that it's it's one of those things. It's like, how many times can you actually use it? This is going to be the third Potter land in all three of the parks. And it's like, you know, sometimes that it itself could be underwhelming. Now, will the attraction be um, spectacular? Absolutely. Um, but anyway, so I agree with you. I feel like either Potter is going to be the final land that they'll, they'll um, announce or Dark Universe. Because I do think Dark Universe is going to also be... A, a game changer as far as the land itself not incorporating as the park as a whole yeah i just and that's kind of where i see it and dark universe came out of came out of nowhere for me because i wasn't really sold on that idea of a hundred year old ip these hundred year old universal monsters and I'm, on, I'm on i'm on i did many videos about it you know and um i'm not gonna hide it i i, I think i'm i think i'm ready to eat crow on dark universe because i was like kind of poo-pooing this a little bit I don't know what I'm seeing from from Bio Reconstruct and 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 the overhead shots of of the portal with the, with the tree roots and everything. I, it looks like it might be probably so far. Okay, I don't want to make definitive statements, but so far it's shaping up to be maybe my favorite of the entire park. Because like you said, George, Harry Potter, been there, done that. I mean, this is the third go now at Harry Potter. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's kind of getting a little worn out. And I've seen a lot of fans even like on Twitter and stuff even talking about that, where it's like, Pro universal people too. It's not just you know pixie dusters and stuff. It's universal people saying, hey, you know, I, I wish they kind of would have went with something else. Potter is kind of getting a little a little worn out, you know. So um, for me, Dark Universe is, a little, is is more fresh. It's different, you know. Um, I think that has the most potential. Um, if 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 Dark Universe under delivers, and it's yeah. In, in my opinion, I, I think that because these other lands are just shaping up to be good but not spectacular so you have to finish like super strong like th this dark universe thing has to be amazing and i'm gonna still wait because as you said og you know we have to wait and see what it's Absolutely. gonna look like but there has been some aerial views of them testing out lo and behold another roller coaster <laughs> that's going to be based off of uh the werewolf you know now i do know that i believe the ride style and vehicles are going to be somewhat like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, I think, okay. cool. I believe. It's something like that. But again, and I love Cosmic Rewind, and I'll probably love that style of roller coaster too. But again, how many roller coasters can you put in a park <laughs> in every single land that is supposed to be a technological game changer? Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be a good park. I'm planning on going. Yep. I want to go with George, you know, we're, 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 we want to go. We want to get, get, we want to get Seymour to go too, you know, I mean, fun, you know, we'll get the whole crew, the whole OG crew, Eva and, and Slime. We'll have make a whole field trip of it, you know? But the thing is, is like, um, I don't know, man. I just, I just, I, so far I haven't really seen, I haven't really seen, I haven't seen, I haven't seen th what they've shown us so far. I haven't seen much that has met that expectation of like this. This is the best of the best. I haven't seen it yet. And you know what? We're going to have an open mind here on this channel. And if, if, if stuff changes along the way that does meet that criteria and is like, oh my God, that's amazing. We'll say it. We'll make a video and we'll absolutely sing all the praises. But as of right now, just because it's universal doesn't mean they're above criticism. I'll criticize universal. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with it. Me too. Yeah, we don't have any issue with it. I'll criticize and, you at Disney too. You know what I'm saying? And, and for all of you that have any shred of a doubt that the we wouldn't criticize disney we have a video that's going to be coming up this week and it's a very spicy one because i have some very choice words about um uh d23 so if you want to see how much of quote unquote pixie dusters we are you'll enjoy that one <laughs> yeah exactly no exactly so yeah if 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 these companies are shitting the bed we're going to call them out you know yeah. and i'm not going to give universal a pass just because you know we want to send disney a message to do better no yeah. no universal you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta give us the good stuff too you're not going to get a pass just because you're not the mouse house i'm sorry it doesn't work at least not on this channel you know mm -hmm. so that's yeah we're going to call them out and again Epic Universe looks like a good park. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Okay, I'm excited for it. But 
so far, what we've seen, it's not meeting the threshold of the best thing that Universal has done. I just don't think it has. And it's being billed as the most technologically advanced thing. And again, I haven't really seen that um, so far. So again, again, we're open to be having our mind changed. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this is set in stone. This is just something that we know so far. One thing too, I noticed somebody, and I, for, I forgot the comment. I should have added it. But she made a comment in the video saying, you know, you shouldn't judge it yet. I respectfully disagree. Trailers are meant to get you excited. You can make an, an educated opinion um, based on a trailer if you want to see a movie or not. So if, if, if a trailer comes out and the movie doesn't look good based on the trailer, you have a right to make that call. Based on that trailer, they didn't sell it to me, right? Or based on the trailer, it did sell it to me. Universal's putting trailers out of these lands. I think it's fair to judge what the marketing material that they're releasing out there. I think it's fair to judge that and say, hey, you know what? The trailer that's meant to sell this thing to me hasn't sold me yet. I think that's a fair thing. So yes, we shouldn't make a definitive statement, which we're not, but we can definitely say, hey, so far based on the marketing material and what Universal is giving us, it hasn't sold us. I think that's a fair, a fair thing. You know, like I, I don't think that we should, we should, have zero opinion because it's just a trailer. I think the trailer is there to get you excited. Did the trailer get you excited or not? In my opinion, it hasn't really moved the needle for me. And I think that's a fair opinion. You know, I think, I, I think we have a right to do that. And it, you have a right to do that with a movie as well. If a, if a trailer drops and it doesn't work for you, or you're disappointed in it, if a Star Wars trailer drops, Acolyte, I didn't like the Acolyte trailer. It underwhelmed me like crazy. I thought it was weak as hell. I am not excited about that. I, I was the, so, I, the poster got me excited before the trailer. And then when I watched the trailer, I was like, okay, this kind of throws off completely different vibes than what the poster was giving. Me. It's a show about Sith and they show a bunch of Jedi. I mean, it, it, I don't know. It didn't sell it to me at all. It looked kind of on the cheap end a little bit, a little, a little bit like book of Boba Fett in a lot of ways, you know? And, but I'm still going to have an open mind. I'm still going to check out the show. I'm going to give it a fair shake, but based on the trailer, I wasn't impressed. That's kind of where I'm at with this universal stuff based on the trailer. I don't know. Now I will, I will say this, the universal trailers for Epic universe are better than the acolyte trailer. I will say that oh, yes. way better. I will say that absolutely. But you have a right to judge something based on a trailer. You just don't have a right to say the final product. You can't judge the final product definitively though. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. So yeah, I don't know. want to put it out there. I actually forgot to add her comment. I, I meant to do that, but, um, but George, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. If you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X formerly known as Twitter at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course you'll find me here on my home base at orange Grove 55 with citrus corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. And everybody that that we that we feature today, their comments, Michael, Cliffix, Banjo, if you want to come on the show and talk Epic Universe, you want to talk Disney, whatever, you're always welcome. Just shoot me a message in the comments below, whatever. Um, we would love to have you on. Absolutely. So we can we can debate Isla Burke, whatever you want to talk about. Just want to put it out there. But we do appreciate the support. We do appreciate you taking the time to comment. We don't know. We're not always going to agree as as a fandom. But I, I think at the end of the day, we, we can all respect each other. And, we, 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 you know, Banjo, Cliffix, Michael, we do respect you. We, 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 we appreciate your support and you leaving those comments. And to anybody, if you disagree with us, comment, comment down below. If, we're, if you think we're totally wrong, there's nothing wrong with, with saying that. We, we welcome all opinions, you know. So um, just keep that in mind, you know. So it's all about the conversation and just kind of like nerding out together is really what it's about, you know, at the end of the day. So... Thank you, everybody, for watching. Comment down below. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful day.